In this specific example truss that was built for you to do this video, um, it shows that gusset plates are on both sides of the truss, of the joint. So you have a gusset on either side. You don't have to do, here's a gusset, here's another gusset, and all the members are joined in there. You don't have to have two gussets, you could do with one gusset if you like to. Whether it is one gusset plate or two gusset plates, key is you need to make sure these joints are well done. Starting with the joints, once again, I repeat, between the floor beams and the truss, and then every joint of the truss has to be well done. And going on top of the truss, as you can see in here, we have all these uh, bracings, ladder bracings to ensure that the trusses work together in 3D. So when we apply load, you don't want this truss to shift laterally, and these cross bracings help prevent that. And you could do something similar if you like on the bottom of the truss for the floor, uh, if you want to add some additional bracings. I want to highlight in here that this whole bridge that was built for this demo, for this video, took only uh, less than a third of a bottle of glue. Less than a third of a bottle of glue. So you don't need to put a lot of glue. The thinner the glue joint, the stronger it is, like we talked about last time in the video. Um, Aaron is pulling the truck out of the bridge. And uh, we will show you the uh, bottom side. Um, some bracings was done in there if you need to. It's your design, you need to decide if you need or not. One very important point I wanna highlight in here is that if you look closely at these members, you will see some that are larger than others. These members here versus these members versus these members and so on, okay? These members are your compression members. This, that, and that, and so on. All these larger members then go switches to these. All these members were the red colored members when you run the computer code. So these members are in compression, so they need to be bigger, otherwise they will buckle. The smaller members were the members that turn into blue when you run the computer code, which means they are in tension. So once again, you can see the compression members versus tension members. And some tension members are smaller than other tension members. Uh, that's all you get that information from the computer software that you use to design your bridge. And the bottom core is probably a good idea to have it, although it's intention to have it a little bit bigger than a normal tension member because you are relying on it to transfer the load from the floor to the truss through the joints.